Hey guys, this is Dr. Aeronautics. Today I'm going to do a quick tutorial for you guys on how to do the Oroville Bound Part 1 scenario. Uh, basically the idea is you have a heavy train and you're coming down a grade in a snowstorm and uh, it requires very serious control of the brakes. This scenario takes place on the Feather River Canyon route, which is my favorite route in California that's been created for Train Simulator. Um, I highly recommend it, and I highly recommend the default scenarios that come with it. Um, they all work, and they're great. Um, what I do have, though, is mixed feelings on the uh, add-ons, like the uh, GP35 scenarios. The train is great, but Unfortunately, you can't. You can see some of these scenarios haven't even been completed. Um, so it it depends. If you really want to drive the GP35, then you, for example, then you can get that scenario. Otherwise, um, if you're in it for the scenarios, um, I would not recommend them because they don't work. Anyway, we will go ahead and get started now. Okay, so this is the simulation state uh, when it loads. Uh, just a quick note about the controls. Um, I recommend not using an external control and using your keyboard for this. Um, the reason being is because um, the brakes will latch up at certain um, percentages to help you with dedents that would exist in real life. And uh, the consequences of going past those dedents are actually pretty uh, severe because it means that you have a brake release. And we'll explain a little bit more about that when we get going. But basically, the deal with the simulation is it's set up so that you will, if you use too much dynamic brake um, to slow down on the hill, you're going to end up with wheel slip. And if you apply the air brakes, you'll find out that you will not be able to hold them with just the uh, minimum reduction, and you would actually have to go into a further reduction. And then when you release the brakes, it takes so much longer um, to recharge the air than it would be from a minimum reduction that by the time the brakes are uh, released and recharged you had already applied them again and this repeated apply and release will cause you to run out of air uh, which means you'll become a runaway and the only way to stop the train is to hit the emergency brakes and by that time your scenario is basically over as far as trying to get any points go but we can click the couple button here when the game is paused. And for some reason, maybe it's because we're going down the hill. Uh, it thinks that the uh, engines are at the back of the train. This is the front. 760 is your head. 759 is your helper. So what you want to do here is set every sixth car. By setting the handbrake of every sixth car, you will have the effect of the train accelerating and braking almost as it would on level ground when going down approximately a 0.7% grade. And this will allow you to use minimum reduction to control the train. Um, this is actually on page 28 of the Feather River Canyon manual that comes with the, uh, with the add-on route. And um, it is actually in the manual where it says at the top of a steep incline, you may wish to set handbrakes on some of the wagons. And this, is, of course, is, is equivalent to standard railroad practice of using retainer valves to maintain air pressure on some cars. So it's not like we're cheating by doing this. It's perfectly legitimate and something that railroads would do it. Now, I would highly recommend that you only do it when you're going to be going downhill for an extended period of time, um, because otherwise there's not really any need to do it. So I would say only use it when you're going over a pass of the Rocky Mountains or the Cascades or like the Alps um, and some mountains in the Appalachians. I'm looking at you, Allegheny Mountain. So we just set every sixth air brake, sorry, hand brake on this menu and that will hold the train. So it only ends up to be about six or seven cars. That's really all you need. So at this point we can go ahead and close that. And the reason we left this menu up is because it keeps the simulation paused. 
uh, as soon as I close it, it will release. We will have to stop at Rich Bar as well as Belden uh, for meats, and the scenario ends at Belden. Um, Rich Bar is at milepost 265, and Belden is at 260. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and release the message box, which will start the simulation. Okay, waste no time in getting started. We're going to go ahead and go forward. Uh, the um, headlights are set to full for you. We're going to go ahead and um, press the release button to get down to 17%. And a second time, we'll release the brakes. One click, two click up there to get our windshield wipers going. And uh, if you go to page 27 of the uh, manual, you actually have a uh, instructions for going down the hill. So we're looking for 140, so you see we're still recharging the brakes. We got 90 and 90 and zero. That means we're released. We can now add power to the first setting, and we should start to roll now. And then once we're going, we can go ahead and go up to notch two. You need to be pretty quick about this. And if you're not quick enough, you're going to be given a time penalty. So we'll just go ahead and go up to notch three here. And be ready on the uh, sand because if you have wheel slip, it seriously impacts your score on this. And I will note that every single adventure is different. Um, that's because Train Simulator has a little bit of physics randomization. The exact time it, when, when you have a wheel slip varies. And the exact amount that having retainers, uh, retainer valves on every sixth car means that you will roll at a different rate every single time in the simulation. So be prepared for that. You will not be able to follow the tutorial one for one. You'll have to make decisions on your own. And that's just the way the game is set up. And to be honest, that's the way real life works. So there's no magical limit for um, what you can do. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is basically give you the tools that you need to to be able to determine when to make the moves. And as far as timing goes, this simulation is, or this scenario is, very strict. You need to keep to a good time in order to uh, not have lateness penalties. So about 20 miles an hour, that's when I start to curve off the speed. Um, by 23 and a half miles per hour, I would consider that a good time to just roll and see what the train wants to do. Um, because you need to remember that if you want to put the dynamic brakes in, it takes a good 10 seconds to get those going. So this is about when I'd want to be zero throttle. And we're just going to see what the train wants to do. Okay, and we're still accelerating. So at this point, I were going to move the dynamic brakes into setup. And the reason I did that so early is because you can see we're still accelerating for another 10 seconds before the dynamic brakes kick in. 
And once you see um, that you were in the break region on the ammeter, you're good. And then when we get down to about 23 miles per hour, that's about where I'm going to consider that we have enough margin. At that point, I'm going to release the brakes, uh, the dynamic brakes, and we're going to see what the train wants to do. Okay, so there's 23 going back to off, and we'll just see what happens. Okay, so we're decelerating, so now we're going to add back in power. So I must note that for um, the Keddy um, time attack, you are not penalized as much if you're a little bit late. So you saw we were basically 37 seconds or so late, and we only lost about three points. So it means the maximum score we're going to get is 998, which as far as I'm concerned, if you can get to 998, there's no reason why you would need a tutorial to get to 1,000. That is good enough for gold. Okay, we just went through the Keddy Y and we're now heading towards an area that will have a steeper slope. And we're passing another signal. You need to pay serious conscious effort to every single signal before you knock it down. Because once it's gone, you're in uh, big trouble if you didn't see it because you need the entire block distance to prepare the slowdown sequence. Okay, at 24 and a half, that's where I'm going to go back to idle. Okay, and we're accelerating again, so we're going to go into dynamics. Okay, those are on, and uh, we'll just see what the train wants to do. thought I had uh, gauge lights on here. Okay, once you get down to 23 and a half, you're okay again. One of these turns on some nice gauge lights. There it is. Okay, accelerating, going back into setup. Okay, and we're going to have to be quick on this, because we're at 25. All right, there's setup, and we're still accelerating, so we're going to go to 1, 2, 3, and do not do not go past 5. You'll get wheel slip. Okay, so we do want to get a little bit away from... 26. So I'm going to go to B4. And that's holding and that's decelerating. All right, so I'm going to go back to B3. 
and we're going down a lot faster. So you kind of have to gauge exactly where it is. I like to hold right around 24 in brakes and about 23 without brakes. That gives me just enough time. Okay, we're clear for the through the next signal. And in normal situations, I would like to hold a um, more safe speed, like about 22 miles an hour. Okay, now we're decelerating, so we're going to go completely off to the dynamics. Um, I like being on the safer side, but if you go much below 22 miles an hour at all, you're going to lose time on the scenario, which is why I am up so high. We were also behind to begin with, so... Okay, 22 and a half is usually where I start like liking to add power again. And sometimes you can't always go by what the number says on the bottom here. You know, that'll sometimes say 1% and you find yourself in notch 2. Other times it'll say 0.7% and you'll find yourself in uh, Dynamics 5 and finding that that's not holding you. Okay, so the next trend is an acceleration, so we're going to let that build until 24. And when we hit 24, that's when I'm hitting setup. Okay, we're still accelerating, so we're going to go to Dynamics 1. I love this rhythmic thumping sound that the windshield wipers make, and sometimes it gets out of sync and then back into sync. And if you listen really attentively, you can actually hear the um, uh, track joints under north, underneath. They go -dum 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 over and over again. Okay, going down fast, so we're bringing the brakes up again. Usually about 0.2 miles per hour is what I consider an acceleration, because sometimes um, you'll get some slack um, moving the train. That can sometimes cause you to go up and back one mile per hour. That usually happens later in the journey. Hopefully you'll see that. If I notice it, I'll point it out. Yeah, you can kind of hear the tracks now if you listen very attentively. It's kind of a boom 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 like that. Okay, and it doesn't seem hard, but if we didn't put those retainer valves on, I can tell you what would have happened is we would have reached uh, notch 5 on the dynamics, and when that happens, if you go to notch 6, you're going to slip. So that's it for dynamics, and if you slip too much, you're going to lose the scenario. So then the next thing um, that we would have done is we would have gone to the... Um, automatic brake and um, activated an initial application 
And what we would have found is even then with the dynamics in the initial application, the um, brakes were not holding. So then we have to advance more into the self-lap region. And what that's going to do is significantly take away from the air reservoirs that the cars have. Okay, we are almost as much dynamics as we can give it. Uh, so anyway, you go further into the application region and that's going to begin taking air from the reservoirs that are in the cars. And I never used to understand this until I played this scenario, why, why that effect happens, but basically on all the all the cars there are these chambers that hold air in them and it's not always clear okay so we've just hit our next um, checkpoint so at this point I recommend saving just in case you make a stupid mistake Let's see, 277, uh, we're at Paxton. You know, just in case, I'm trying to show you guys how to do it. Um, and something happens. Well, you can't see him, but underneath the, the car, there would be a, um, a chamber that looks a lot like the pod of a TIE fighter from Star Wars. And that's your reservoir. And basically that, that holds in the, the uh, brake pipe pressure, which is 90. But when you start adding further reductions, it's going to take more and more from that reservoir. And every time you do that, you create a pressure wave that continues through the brake pipe at a set speed. So if I apply the brakes, brakes are applying, they're still applying, they're still applying, they're still applying, you get the idea. You basically have to um, wait a long time for the brakes to apply. But that's okay, you can always take air out faster than you can put air in. The problem comes where then you get to a shallowing grade and you find that you turn the dynamic brakes off, but you're still slowing down. And this is a time attack, so you need to stay going quickly. So then you release the brakes, but then, oh no, you, you've now, um, you can't gradually release them, They're, they go all at once. So then you're like, oh no, um, we're accelerating again because I, I should have released them some. So then you add the dynamic brakes back in. And if you reach dynamics five, you're you're like, oh shoot, I need to put on more brakes. So then you put the brakes on again. And then uh, you start finding, hey, we're not slowing down. Because when you release the brakes, suddenly you have to charge up your air. There's a compressor that will run uh, in the background. It's kind of hard to hear in this train. But if I notice it, I will point it out. And what will happen is this red needle will start to climb towards 140. And it'll get there, no problem. But here's the issue, right? When you release the brakes, that release happens in a pressure wave and the charging happens in a pressure wave. So the brake pipe will be charged up again, but then what's happening is those little reservoirs that are in every single car, those start sucking in air. They start breathing in air and pressurizing. And as that happens, it steals air from the brake pipe to equalize it. And so then the, the air pressure falls again in the brake pipe and the compressor kicks on again. So the issue is your recharge rate. If you don't recharge at the rate that you're expecting to,
uh, if you don't recharge at the rate that you were expecting to, then what you're going to find is that you have less air. So then you apply the brakes harder the next time. And that will get the effect that you need. And then you'll find out that you're slowing down again. So then you release the brakes again. And then you start to accelerate again, and your brakes haven't charged up again. And then you find out that you have to uh, start slowing down again. Well, this time, after making so many continued repeated applications and releases, you're running out of air. And if you find that you're out of air, that is in a really bad situation to be in. Um, basically, if you find yourself in that situation, then you need to move the train brake into emergency, which sucks because that really takes from your score when you have an emergency brake application and you cannot release them. When you come to a stop, you have to set every single handbrake in your car or in your train because if you start moving, once you release the brakes, you are in big, big, big trouble. And when I say big, big trouble, I mean you're done. You know, at that point, you're going to become a runaway train to the point where you derail. And there won't be a thing you can do. So once you have all the hand brakes in, then you release the brakes. Wait a good 20 minutes for the brakes. Yes, 20 minutes for the brakes to charge up. And then you make a application using the brakes again. You release the correct amount of handbrakes this time so that you don't find yourself in the situation again. And then when you're ready to move, you release the brakes and you wait a long time for them to charge up. Hence the point setting the air brakes. So that's why we like to uh, set the handbrakes uh, instead of playing that game because that's kind of a game of playing roulette. You know, is it charged up? Is it not charged up? Is it charged up? Is it not charged up? And you're going to find out the hard way. Okay, it looks like we're at Twain now. Okay, and 167 is the maximum you can get, so we're going to go ahead and save again, just in case. And I got a little bit faster than I would normally feel comfortable doing, but I did that because we were a couple seconds from being late. So I wanted to use as much speed as I could so that we could knock down Twain at the fastest speed possible. Um, the longer it goes on, the better uh, catching up goes because we are holding close to 25 miles an hour. And the longer we do at a higher speed, the more distance and time we catch up. And there will come a point where the um, time attack is more serious. Um, when we stop at Belden, we'll need to be at the time that actually shows on the clock and not up to one minute late, or we'll lose points. It's 
So we definitely do want to travel as quickly as possible. Okay, so next point of interest is at Gray's Flat, which is at milepost 272. And somewhere in here, there is one of the few grade crossings on this section of the line. We're in the middle of a canyon. And the only other road that's pretty much out here is um, California State Route 70. Um, yeah, other than the 70, there's not really that many uh, settlements out here, other than a couple houses every once in a while. Alright, we're too slow. We're going to turn the dynamic brake off and get that milepost 273. We are counting down to, um, I believe it's Oakland that the, that the ro railroad counts down to. Although at one point it might have gone across the, uh, the Bay Bridge and uh, be counting to San Francisco. But anyway, we've got one more mile to go until we're at uh, Gray's Flat. Actually, I think this is Gray's Flat right here, because there is a siding up this ways. Yep. That's it. Uh, actually, Twain. Wait a minute. Milepost 273. Okay, this no, this is the lower end of Twain. We are still a mile from Grace Flat. Let's take a quick look at the canyon here. It's kind of hard to see in the snow. But there's this big drop-off, and then here is the uh, east fork of the Feather River. It This canyon extends way up on the sides. It's kind of hard to see, but it goes way up on, on the other side. And that's pretty much all the sightseeing that we can afford. This, this scenario is not like the last three. Uh, if you really want an opportunity to... enjoy the scenery, definitely do the Ketty Consignment series because those are very easy. All you need to do is put in a couple notches of throttle and it's uphill the whole way, which sounds like it's bad, but basically all it means is that to go slower, if you're going too fast, you just reduce the throttle. You know, going down is a different story because it needs brakes. Okay, 272. We're now at Grace Flat. And there's the station marker there.
Okay, so that signal aspect uh, is a proceed at slow speed, prepared to stop signal. And I don't think that's exactly what it is because the yellow is uh, caution, be prepared to stop at the next signal. And I've found that I've never had to stop coming up. Now there should be another train that we're going to see in just a moment that's going to be cutting through the fog. And unfortunately my, uh, my headlights are hidden, so I, I can't adjust them easily, but what would normally happen is when we come up to the train, we would want to dim the lights. It might work. Okay, there he is. Let's see if we can do that. That dim our lights. I think it did. Now that we're past his engine, we'll turn them back up again. I honestly can't tell if it did or not. So there is enough room for him to keep moving with me um, coming down here. I'm going to add in a little bit of power. So even though it's kind of strange to be on a siding and passing a train and expecting to see a green signal, we should expect to see that. Because this meat, we are not going in the hole. Okay, there's the end of his train. So we should expect to see a clear signal around the bend here. And there's our whistle point. And we're clear. Okay, we're really starting to slow down now, so I'm going to add more power back in again. Okay, milepost 270, we're arriving at Bergalia, and you can see what I'm talking about when I say that you have to go really fast in this scenario in order to not get penalized for going late. You can see we've basically been above 23 the whole time, and we still haven't caught all the way up to Bergalia, and we're going to have to do that by the time we have to stop because we will lose points if we go too far into the journey. Okay, now luckily we did still get full credit here, so we did just squeak that out. 
We'll go ahead and save. We are coming up to the hardest segment of the entire route, which is we have to stop at a signal and then go again and then stop again. And this is where if you've been uh, applying and releasing your brakes constantly, this is where you're going to meet your end. All right, I see some funny with the speed here, so we're gonna go into the dynamics. Okay, all right, um, we are getting really close to accelerating too far. If you accelerate too far, press the apostrophe key until uh, the automatic brake latches up, and that will give you a minimum reduction. All right, we're still accelerating. So I'm going to go to B5, which is as much as I can do, um, because we are too close to being over time. And if I see 25.8, I'm going a minimum reduction. So it looks like 5 is just holding the train right now. And we'll have to stop at Rich Bar, which is at milepost 265. Okay, we're good. So we're going to have to stop the train in about four and a half miles. Windshield wipers dabbed before it was cool. And you gotta see, you gotta keep an eye on your speed because, you know, one minute you might be slowing down slowly and then the next minute it's like 23.4 or 23.5, 23.6, you know, and you've only got a few seconds to react at, at the speed that we're trying to go here. Now, on some of these steeper slopes, it might be possible that, you know, the randomization of the simulation makes your train a little bit heavier than mine, 
and the dynamic brakes not sufficiently hold the train. So you, you might have to apply a minimum reduction. Once you apply a minimum re reduction, do everything you can to avoid releasing it. So that means turn the dynamic brakes off and let the speed crawl down to like 20, even lower than that, I'd say about 18, before you um, think about releasing the brakes. And then when you release them, bring the dynamic brakes into setup before you release the brakes so that you can react quickly if the train accelerates. Uh, okay. Remember what I said about using uh, point two to determine whether or not you're accelerating or braking? I just saw the three flip into the four and go back to three and back to four again. That's an example of why we do two. And let's see, we're just about in five. I don't want to go any more than that because uh, I'm concerned about the train. wheel slipping. That will take down your time. Okay, we're accelerating again. So at this point, I've got my hand on the apostrophe key, and if I see 25.8, minimum reduction comes on. No questions about it. And no ifs, ands, or buts. Okay, 25.7. If I see 25.8, I'm doing minimum reduction. All right, you guys are lucky. Hold apostrophe and release it once you get to 24%. Um, that latches up automatically. You can see we've now had a reduction in brake pipe and equalizing reservoir, and the brake cylinder is down, and now we want to let off on the dynamics. So it is exactly what I said. We do not want to rele release the brakes if we can help it because we have to stop in about two and a half miles. And one neat little trick that I use sometimes is riding the brakes. If you need just a little bit extra to keep yourself from slowing down, you can do that. I don't, of course, like to do it, um, which is why, you know, in real life, I would probably, if I had the option to, I would drive at a slower speed and just let the speed go down, and if it takes me longer, it takes me longer. Okay, we're still slowing down, so we're probably going to have to release the brakes which is not preferred at all. Okay. So at this point, we're going to go to idle. We're going to put the brakes into setup. And we're going to bring the train brake towards release, but it'll latch up at 17%. All right, dynamics are on. Releasing the brakes. All right, now the reservoir is coming down, and you notice the brake pipe still hasn't charged up yet, right? Because it takes time. And this is the dangerous part about the brakes, is we cannot apply them again. And we're still slowing down, but we do it to be really careful about it. As you see, they're still charging up. And by the way, this is the default setting. So it means that the uh, brake scripting works at one third of the rate that it would if you did maximum. So if you were on hard mode, I would not want to apply throttle right now. Not at all.
All right, let's see. Still not charged up. So, see what I mean? I do not want to apply those brakes again right now. And I, I know from experience that right about now we're going to hit a pretty steep downhill slope and we're going to have a reduced speed to 20 miles an hour. And that's when we're going to want to have wanted to use those brakes again. I don't know if it's a bug in the scripting, but the other thing that you can look at is your main reservoir, because as as the train uh, pulls in more air, you should see the uh, main reservoir fall and get pushed back up again by the uh, train. Um, it doesn't look like we're actually... Uh, coming down so we may be fully recharged because the main reservoir doesn't seem to be coming down at all and this is where we're going to have to prepare to stop so I guess the reduction to 20 miles an hour that is uh, at the next stop for Belden so at this point we're going to prepare to stop now so we're going to bring the, the dynamic brake in and this is where you have to be really careful now, the signal says green, but it the scenario wants you to stop, and you need to stop. And, as before, you want to avoid applying the brakes and releasing them as much as possible, so you don't want to go beyond minimum reduction. You will have to apply them at some point. We'll go ahead and go to notch 5 right now. And it's kind of tricky for knowing exactly when you slow down. I'm going to apply the brakes at this point. So we just went up to minimum reduction again, and I don't want to go beyond minimum reduction. We're slowing down too quickly. So I'm going to release the dynamics now. And we don't have to stop exactly where um, the signal is. We do have a little bit of play on where the train stops. And keep in mind, too, that you lose the dynamics once you get below about 7 miles an hour. So be prepared to lose it. Alright, we're still slowing down too quickly. So we're going to ride the brakes here a little bit. Okay, so once the entire engine is across that orange bit, it doesn't matter at that point. We can have the train stopped. Okay, right there. That was the end of the dynamic brake region. Okay, and we've come to a stop where we need to.
and we managed to get full credit, so that's really good. I'm happy about that. So we're going to save again. And we already have a clear signal to continue. So bring the brakes back to latch and again to release them. So we can go ahead and add in notch one of power. And notch two. You definitely don't want to uh, waste time at all because we're going to have to stop again really soon. Alright, and once we hit continuous speed, then I'm going to think about going up to notch 4 to get the train up to speed. Okay, I think we're good. Nope, that's too much. Um, I don't want to go much beyond 950 amps because we'll get wheel slip. This time when we reach 20, I'm going to begin taking the throttle out. We're at milepost 264, and our final stop is at Belden, which is in four miles. All right, we're still decelerating, so we can keep on hammering the throttle out to accelerate. But do make frequent checks because you never know when, when it goes from notch 3 in power to move forward to notch 5 in the uh, dynamics to slow down. Okay, we are now accelerating in notch 2. accelerating a notch one.
and so what's going on now is we're in a really flat area and uh, as soon as we get back out of this tunnel we'll go down a steeper hill and that's when we're going to see the reduction for 20 miles an hour. Boom, accelerating again. All right, 24, dynamic brake is coming back on again. Okay, we're just about two miles from our stopping point. So any minute now we should start to see the uh, 20 mile per hour restriction. And when you see that, don't wait to act on it. Because we're only doing 22 and a half as it is. So if you get to 20, you can get more aggressive once you get down there. But you definitely want to avoid um, activating the brakes as long as possible because you will have to stop and you do not want to have to release those brakes. Okay, there's a 20. going to reduce throttle and get down to 20 miles an hour now. And now everything will shift by 5 miles per hour. Now luckily this will make it a little bit easier to stop because it takes out a significant amount of the energy that we have. And don't forget too that the dynamics have no effect below 5 miles per hour. Which means we only get dynamics between 20-ish and 5.
the closer you get, the further you bring your speed down. So I was keeping it to within 20, 21. Now I'm going to definitely get under 20. Here's the downhill, by the way, that I was talking about. And now I want to get down to 19. And you can see now we've got a yellow, which is be prepared to stop at the next signal, which is true. Okay, now as tempting as it is to slow down, don't do it just yet because you will not have enough time to do that. But there is one trick about the fact that we are, this is the last stop of the entire scenario, which means as long as you're smart, you won't have to release the brakes. So you can actually come in at a faster speed. And if you find yourself needing more air to stop, well, it's not going to hurt as long as you stop in the section where you need to stop. If you go if you stop short, you're in big trouble because now you have to release and reapply. And that's what you really do not want to do. Okay, about 0.4 miles out is where I like to start really hitting it. So this is it. We'll begin the stopping sequence now. So we'll go up to maximum permissible dynamics. And we'll bring the speed down to about 10. And once we've hit 10, we're good. Okay, and once the train gets inside, you know that we are we are good to go. So then we just add as much braking as we need to stop the train. So I'm going to go to minimum reduction first, and then hit the dynamics while we have them to get stops.
So we'll just go ahead and add a little bit more braking here. Don't forget to go down to 17% to latch it up. And that should get us stopped. And that's it. Okay, we got 167 points. Good job. You'll be held here for a while while train WPX to pass. So let's see how you did. And we already know we got 999. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can get one more point to this scenario. And that's simply by starting just a tiny bit faster than we did last time. You'll see that we were 13 seconds late, which is um, time 0 0.3 for one penalty. So basically every three seconds you are late, um, you get one penalty. So um, if we were just nine seconds earlier on Ketty, um, we would have had a perfect score. But I think this is probably good enough for you guys to uh, know easily how to pass this scenario with no problem. And I hope this has been helpful for you. I've been Dr. Aeronautics, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.